final jeopardy. College team sports, a good subject, a popular subject. We'll reveal a clue in a moment. Well, until that last clue, I had very little to do tonight, and now I have even less to do. Welcome to the final wager. I'm Keith Williams. Liz, uh, no, sorry, Kelly, locked that one up on the very last clue of Double Jeopardy, at least the last one we saw. The $400 clue wouldn't have made a difference. And uh, she's got this locked up, 16.9, Liz, 7,600. Good pull on the uh, Rambo clue. And Tim just uh, kind of buried himself with a lot of wrong answers, 4,200. It's kind of a tough daily double that he got. And speaking of daily doubles, Liz has such a commanding position well, in spite of herself in some ways. She had two second level clues and wagered basically nothing. She had 2,400 on the first one, wagered 500 for a slam dunk. And then in a category where they give you the first was a CL, I think it was the first two letters. On eight hundred dollar clue in double jeopardy, wagering just a thousand out of twenty three hundred, she could have parlayed that into a much bigger amount. What would she have had? She would have eighteen hundred more. So yeah, it would have been well over ten thousand dollars. And then she ran what like eight clues in a row or something like that. I got uh, I got dinged on that <clears throat> sixteen hundred dollar clue, which is the first one that Tim was able to get into with uh, OPEC. I said the Arab League, which I looked it up, and it was actually founded in 1945, so I was off by a good 20 years or so, so yeah, I don't have too much to discuss in terms of wagering. I got my, uh... oh yeah, Liz also went for the top row when there was a daily double and maybe seven clues left. Why did everyone laughing? It just showed a shot of the three contestants. And everyone was chuckling, it looked like. I don't know, I had the mute on and they don't play the sound there. But Liz went to the $200 clue. She thought about it for a while and then jumped up there instead of hunting for that daily double. She could take advantage of that. Uh, I wrote geography and rhyme. Couldn't finish that one in fast enough time. That was just a horrible category. Uh, thought of a lot of different alternatives for the uh, UCK category. Especially that picture of the guests arriving for the potluck dinner. Uh, Camus. I actually just reread The Stranger. And it is as boring the second time as it is the first time in French. This time it was in English. Very short, tight sentences. Very nice, but really not getting anything. Which, of course, is kind of the point. Because <laughs> nothing matters in... Merceau's Life, uh, The Theremin. That's one of my favorite musical instruments. And that's basically, I can't remember what I was discussing with this, this with the other day, but we were talking about all the old 50s sci-fi movies and how all the alien spacecraft would come in. And in fact, there was a, there was a guy in the Atlantic Avenue, Barclays Center, Pacific Street, Station who I've seen play the theremin, which is pretty cool. Maybe I was just making it up. There's also a guy who plays the didgeridoo from time to time, which is amusing. Just don't play bagpipes. Team sports the blue players in the subway, at least. The USA's first intercollegiate athletic event was in 1852. In this, which as a sport goes back to at least the Middle Ages. Thirty seconds. Good luck. Jousting. <laughs> Uh, I'll start here. I don't like this one very much, but that's the only thing I can think of that goes far, far, far back. Uh, tournament? Jousting? No. Uh, not football, not golf. It's like Tim is writing a personal message here. You, know, you still could win another $1,000 for getting second. I got nothing better. Tim, we come to you first. You were in third place with 4,200. Let's take a look at your response to this team sport. You said, what is javelin? I see. I throw, you catch. No, that's wrong. It's going to cost you 2601 dropping to 1599 so That's not a good, uh, good thought to have. What did she come up with? Fencing. No, that's not it's going to do it. It's a good one, too. It'll cost you 3000 But archery is not team sport, either, so Over to I guess I'm sunk here. She had 16900 and her response, javelin also. No, we're talking about rowing. 
Did you lose anything? No, you're the new champ, though. You have oh. And you have an invitation to come back and play again tomorrow. I guess that makes sense, but who had the time to row back then? I mean, either you're toiling in the fields or you were not doing work. You were letting other people do the work, so I don't know who was doing rowing at that point. Uh, I, okay, I get it. It was Oxford and Cambridge, so I assume. Is, they, is that the longest, the oldest sports meet or something in the in the world, whatever that cup is called? Anyway, and I'm wondering if that's talking about the head of the Charles, which would make sense because that's in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and has been going on for a long time and is probably the premier, well, definitely the premier rowing event in the Northeast, maybe in the country. I don't know that much about rowing crew, except the coxswain is the one who yells at the people and is the only one who's facing in the correct direction. That and... Rowing and tug of war are the only two sports in which you cross the finish line backwards if you're doing it properly. I think. There's not really a finish line in the pole vault. Anyway, I will stop blabbering now and uh, let you get back to your regularly scheduled whatever. Not watching Final Wager. And uh, you have an invitation to join me here tomorrow on the Final Wager.